Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Glory to his name, hallelujah. We say, first of all, happy Father's Day to our Father in heaven, our Father. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallowed be your name, Father. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Daddy. And then we we say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers. And I sent out a special, special happy Father's Day to my father, Herbert McCoy Sr., Happy Father's Day, Daddy. And then to, to my Godfather, the one that, 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 that's been right there too. Uh, happy Father's Day to Oliver Crumble. Oliver Crumble, Happy Father's Day. And then to all of my brothers and all of my friends that are fathers, we say to you, Happy Father's Day. And, and you know, we have a tradition that we say to, to those single mothers who are are holding up both of the roles of being a good mother and and a step-in daddy. And we say to y'all, happy Father's Day. Oh, what a day, what a day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We realize and we recognize that you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. So, Lord, we say to you, thank you right now in the name of Jesus. You woke us up this morning. You clothed us in our right minds, and you gave us a reasonable portion of health and strength. Lord, you didn't let the devil take us out last night, but you woke us up and touched us one more time. Our family is doing good, dear Lord. We have a house over our head, and we have shoes on our feet that food on our table. You have been the greatest provider that we ever could imagine, Lord. And not only have you been a provider, the Heavenly Father, you have also been our protector. And thank you, Lord, for protecting us from all evil, hurt, harm, and danger. And then, Lord, more important than anything else, you have been the one who loves us with agape love, unconditional love, no strings attached. And your grace and your mercy has saved us because you gave the most important thing ever to you, your only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice, and we thank you. And when you went back home to sit next to your father at his right hand, you are there interceding on our behalf, and you did not leave us helpless or homeless or orphan. You sent back your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit this day. Lord, bless now. As we get ready to study your word in Sunday school, bless this technology, Facebook, conference call. Bless, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead your blood, dear Lord, over everyone that is listening now, every home, every family, every community, every state, every country, everywhere in the world who are listening to this now and in the future. We plead your blood over them. In Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Again, happy Father's Day. And to all that are uh, are texting on the, uh, uh, are commenting, if you will, on Facebook, we thank you for your comments. Please, please, before you uh, leave, if you got to go somewhere, just share. Share this uh, on your page. Uh, we, We want people to, to to hear this word today. Our word today comes from Matthew, the 
15th chapter, Matthew, the 15th chapter, starting at verse 1, going down to verse 9. I'm going to read it out of the uh, New King James Version of the Bible, and it reads as follows. Then the scribes and the Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus, saying, Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? for they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. He answered and said to them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For, for God commanded saying, honor your father and your mother, and he who curse father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus, you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites. Well, did, did Isaiah prophesy about you saying these people, draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain, they worship me, teaching as doctoring the commandments of me. The title and the tag we want to place on this Sunday school lesson is do the right thing. Do the right thing. I, I love the Spike Lee movie uh, uh, so many years ago where he was dealing with the racist issues in his community and he was encouraging people uh, uh, to do the right thing. And, and I, I want to encourage us today to do the right thing. I, I, I have a soapbox this morning. I'm sorry for those who don't like to hear a pastor or a preacher get up on their soapbox but I got a soapbox issue that's heavy on my heart. We in America are going around uh, as as the uh, what is it called the 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 Attorney General um, Sessions from the state of Alabama, my home state, is saying that that he's justified by separating uh, the uh, uh, immigrants that are trying to come into this country illegally from their young children. I'm here to tell you, and I'm saying it with no uncertain terms, this is a crime against humanity. It is immoral and it is inhumane. And, and, and we who are Americans, and I love my country, God bless America to do the right thing. But I want to tell you right now, on this Father's Day, we are not doing the right thing. I don't care how we place it, plan it. We, we, we got a history. I know I'm preaching stuff. I'm on my soapbox this morning. I know we have a history that separates children from their parents. So we can go all the way back to when America first started and we came and attacked the Native Americans who already lived here and we separated them from, from their land. We separated them from their lifestyle and then we sent their children and them off to another area. I'm telling you, we got a problem in America. And then let me go on to say, then when we got into this slavery situation, slavery, oh, have mercy, God. Slavery, they sold mama and daddy one place and they sold a child the other. America, our hands are stained with the blood of not taking care of our children. I'm on my soapbox today. I'm on my soapbox, and here we are in this new world order where, where, where on this Father's Day, many fathers are dead because of the injustice of just killing a man just because of the color of his skin. America, I'm sorry, I'm on my soapbox today. And here we have 
all of these men of color in prison, in jail, can't take care of their families. When they get out of jail, they can't find a job. Before they went into jail, all they could find was illegal work. I'm sorry, America. We got blood on our hands. And we need to do the right thing. Now I'm getting into my text. I'm off my soapbox, but I'm into my text now. Because we need to learn how to do the right thing. And so our lesson today is dealing with this scripture in Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 through 9. Our key verse, our key verse is verse 8, and it reads, These people draw nigh unto me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but, but their heart is far from me. These are the words that Jesus Christ spoke uh, to the Pharisees and he's still speaking those words uh, to us today. I'm sorry, I, I this, this word today is a hard word. This word today is a word that is as pertinent today as it was 2000 years ago. There are people who think that, that by what they say out of their mouths, that, Think what they let come across their lips is honoring God. But God is saying, you draw near unto me with your mouth and honor me with your lips, but your heart uh, is far from me. Because the Father, Abba, the Lord, his main characteristics is love. Love and love. He's a holy God. He's a loving God. He's a caring God. And he never has ever turned anyone away. Even in this text today, you will see how Jesus dealt with these Pharisees, even though they were contradicting the word of God for man's traditions and laws. Oh yeah, I, I know I'm all over the text when, when I started my soapbox because too many people saying, well, that's the law. You can't come into our country and, and just think we're going to let you in. Well, that's the law. But when you start separating children from their parents, that's humane. That's savage. And I'm here to tell you, America, don't be getting fooled by all of this patriotism and all of this uh, stuff. We need to pray for America. We need to pray for this world because man has did so many humane things. And I'm just not talking about the, the men that are European descent, like Hitler and all of them. No, I'm talking about all of us because there was an Idi Amin in Africa. So don't get me wrong. In Asia, you had Genghis Khan. Don't get me wrong. This is a man problem. This is a man problem. You said, Pastor, you on a soapbox this morning. Yes, I am. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's one of them kind of days. So, so, so in this text, we're going to see how man has put their traditions and their laws above God's law. And what Jesus is really telling us, the key concept to this lesson is that those who claim to be true Christians ought to know it's a matter of the heart. And what's going on in your heart should come out in your actions, not faking it till you making it 
but doing the right thing because it is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Say, Pastor, I had to sit back for a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to lay back on that for a minute. So as we look at this message today, we're going to talk about Jesus cares more about how we honor or obey his word, the Bible, than what we do to look good on the outside to others. And we must understand in this lesson, the key, it is important to obey God in both our minds and our heart. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Sister, Sister Trevor. Yeah, I'm preaching today. I'm preaching. I, 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 I don't care if, 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 if my audience go away. I, I don't care. I'm not trying to impress you. That ain't my job. My job is to influence your thoughts. My job is to preach God's word that you might be persuaded to do the right thing, even when the right thing does not line up with the people that you're around. So as we look at this lesson today, our, our, our learning facts is to summarize the nature of the conflict between Jesus and the Pharisees in today's text. The biblical principles that, that, that we're going to deal with is to explain how human traditions and institutions can hinder a person from responding to God's message. And our daily application that we want to deal with in this lesson, when we walk away from it, is to identify a behavior that is based on improper motives and make a plan for change. Oh, yeah. We're going we gonna to talk about making a change because we have to learn how to do the right thing. Now, let me give you some background so you will understand this lesson just a little bit better. We, we got this group called the Pharisees. The Pharisees is, is, is one of the largest Jewish religious group uh, of leaders, uh, uh, and they had uh, 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 this 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 tradition that that they believe that the scripture the old testament was the authority but in addition to reading the old testament as the authoritative word of god they decided to come up and add a hundred religious hundreds, not just a hundred, hundreds of religious traditions to the law. And then most of those traditions, they treated them as if they were more important than the word of God. They were fierce. I said fierce opponents of Jesus because, because he refuted their interpretation. Yes, he did. Jesus, Jesus, I, I ain't playing that. Y'all, y'all going around talking all this noise. I ain't, I ain't playing that. He refuted their traditions and their laws. Yes, he did. And then the next word I want to talk about is hypocrite. That's a Greek word. It's, it's original meaning was to give an answer that that the meaning later shifted to describe one who is pretentious or believe that he is better than he really is in other words it's somebody who lying to themselves and believe in their own lie that's a hypocrite that's a hypocrite. And Jesus opposed religious leaders who were hypocritical. And so here it is in this text, in the book of Matthew. It's the first book of the New Testament. And Matthew introduces Jesus. This is the, the, the record of the ancestry of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of David 
and of Abraham. Matthew presents a proclamation of good news. The gospel of Matthew establishes Jesus as the son of God, the long awaited Messiah of Israel and the world savior. The gospel of Matthew records the birth of Jesus by Mary, who was a virgin and her subsequent marriage to Joseph. The wise men who came to visit the infant baby, Jesus, and, and, and the flight of, of G- Joseph and Mary to, to, to Egypt after the angel warned Joseph to take his family there for their protection. The Gospel of Matthew describes the birth of Jesus as fulfilling prophecy. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophets. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And Jesus taught us and taught his disciples through the word of God, through through the book of Matthew, It teaches us how to live and and then how to share with others the way to become true followers of Jesus Christ. Can you hear how the book ends? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. I'm going to say that again. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, teaching these new disciples to obey all the commandments I give them. Yes, that's, that's what we're supposed to do. And that's what the book of Matthew describes. And so it is. Jesus is now dealing with some disciples, or not disciples, but Pharisees and teachers of the law. And in dealing with them, there's a conflict. That's my first point. My second point tonight, or this morning, excuse me, will be the confrontation. My final point will be the condemnation. And then my conclusion will be the change. Conflict, confrontation, condemnation, and change. Listen to verses one and two, this time from the new living translation of the Bible. And it says, not the new living, but the new international version. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders they don't wash their hands before they eat. That, that, that's the conflict. That's the conflict. The, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law coming to Jesus and, and raising this question because they're trying to question Jesus' authority because his statements and his teaching contrast with their interpretation of the law. Yes, his authority and his statements and teaching conflicted with their interpretation of the law. And they asked him, say, why, 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 why your disciples don't 
they don't do the ritual washing of their hands. His, his disciples did, did not ritually wash their hands prior to eating bread. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus did not immediately respond, but instead asked them how they could justify not taking care of their parents, which is a commandment of the law. And he turned the question about something minor into a larger question of the faithfulness to the law. So here we have, they came with this conflict. They came with this contrast, trying to confront Jesus. And he flipped the table and gave them a confrontation. Now, I want to talk about this from a different vantage point because I've, I've experienced this many times. We have a tradition that is not in the Bible, but we do it all the time. We, we give God thanks and say grace over our food. There's no direct way to do it in the Bible that tells us that we have to do this. This is our tradition. That this is the tradition that, that, that we use. And, and we sit down and, and when we say grace, we say, God is great. God is good. We thank you for our food. But we need to be honest with each other. Some people do that in silence. Some people do monetary pauses to signal their gratitude. Some people, when they get ready to eat their food, they go, you know, they 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 go, mm 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 mm. All of these are just traditions. And so I can remember one time one of my cousins got upset with me because I didn't say grace. And then they had the audacity to tell me I, 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 I should say grace when I was a little boy. And, 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 and my aunt looked at him and said, look, don't, don't be tripping off of him not saying grace. You say your grace. You don't know what he didn't say in his heart. And I know for a fact he's very thankful for this food. So don't 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 let your traditions lock you in till you're at a point where you're causing a conflict. This is man's tradition. Our relationship with God and how our attitude of gratitude goes to him, that's personal. And and as a person, you don't have the right to jump into somebody else's case because they don't have the same tradition that you do. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking, y'all, because that's what Jesus is dealing with. Let's go on to verse three. Jesus, Jesus replied, and why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? Go on to verse four. For God said, Honor your father and your mother, and anyone who cursed their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father and mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. So Jesus, after they brought this conflict to him, he started a confrontation. They asked the little thing and he took it bigger. Homie, homeboys, y'all breaking the commandment of God for the sake of tradition. And I know that Pharisee went, what? What you saying, dog? Come on, man. What you saying? No. No, no, let me break this thing down to you. You honor 
God, word of God says, honor your mother and father. And, and you know, and it goes on to say that, that if you honor your mother and father, you, you'll have long life. And, and then he says, and anyone who cursed their father and mother is to be put to death. That's a death penalty. So, so on this Father's Day, you better call your daddy. If, if he's gone to heaven, you better say, say a prayer for him. If he you can't get in contact with him, you bet you you bet you better pray for him. Even though he may not be the right daddy, he may have just been a sperm dad that just donated his sperm to your mama to make you. He he may be one of them, one of them never dare dads. He comes and he goes. He may just be a sugar daddy to you and your mama, or just to you, just every now and then come on around and give you a little sugar. You know, buy you something, get you some tennis shoes. You still better honor your father. He may be an absentee dad. You don't know who he is. You may not even recognize. But there is still a responsibility on our part to honor our father and our mother. Whether they doing what's right or not. You and I must do what's right. I told you, it's a hard lesson. I see, I know some of you got abusive fathers that abuse you mentally, spiritually, physically, sexually, and you ain't forgave them for that. Well, I'm telling you something right now. If you are an adult, and those things happen to you as a child, you need to forgive them because it ain't hurting them, it's hurting you. And if you just happen to be a child that is listening to this right now and your father is abusing you sexually or abusing you physically, I'm being straight with you, do the right thing. Tell somebody. And if you got one of those mamas that they so concerned about keeping that man that they ain't trying to take care of their children, you need to tell your teacher. You need to tell the police. Somebody Tell somebody. And, and, and all you got to do is right in the middle of your hand, you put, you put help and adopt. And when you pass somebody, You put that help in that dot up hand. Nobody else got to see you, but somebody will see that. And they'll know that you're in an abusive situation and that you need help. Because if your family have a tradition that, and and some families got this, a tradition of incest, you need to do something about it. Break that curse and do the right thing. If you a mama and you allowing that to go on in your household, mercy on your soul. Don't play the dummy. You say, Pastor, you going too deep today. Yes, I am. Because this thing Jesus just said is some of the reason we as African-Americans are having such a hard time in general because we don't honor our fathers and we have fathers who are not even honorable. But you can't walk around with that hate and that anger in your heart. My sister, my sister, I love my sister. She. She made a statement on Friday night, which was so powerful. She said, one thing I can say is my daddy was a good daddy. He may not have been a good husband to my mom, but irrespectful of that, I honor my father. Oh, yeah. That's my daddy. He may not have been a good husband to my mama. In these latter years, but as my daddy, 
he's my hero. He's my hero. Always have been and always will be. I take pride in being his son. Why? Because my daddy taught me how to love. He taught me how to respect others. And he taught me that God is real. Hallelujah. I, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just on these soapboxes today, but I had to get that out. So Jesus, Jesus goes on and when he tells him that, that he says, but you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father and mother with it. And he says, thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. Now, what Jesus is talking about is this thing called Corbin. Corbin is, is the thing that, that, that they, 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 they say, uh, I'm going to dedicate, uh, I'm going to pledge a certain amount of money to the temple, to God, so that, 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 that it can be used for God's glory. But then when their parents are in a situation where they need their help, their finances, these people, these Pharisees are going around and saying, Corbin, I've given this to God. I can't help you. But the fact of the matter is that what they have pledged to God, they're still using for their own personal good. And they were not trying to help their mother and father. Let me break this down to you from my perspective. And all that hey, I'm part of a sandwich generation. That's that's you know, they, they call us the last of the baby boomers. Well, the last of the baby boomers and those in the generation that follow us, the X generation, we 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 are the sandwich generation. And what do I mean by sandwich? Well, we have our children that we have to take care of. We have our grandchildren that we have to take care of. There are many mothers and fathers who are around taking care of their children and their grandchildren all at the same time. Because their children are messed up and the mother and the father both are there taking care of the children, their grandchildren. Then we're sandwiched on the other side with our elderly parents, those who were part of the beginning of, of the, the uh, 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 baby boomer generation or those that are still living, like my mom and, and my dad from the greatest generation. They're still around and we have to take care of them and we have to take care of our children and with the two on each side of us and our grandchildren also over there, we sandwiched in the middle. That's a hard job. But others have done it before. How did they do it? With the help of God. And so we don't claim Corbin. Whatever we got, we'll give to our mothers and our fathers. Whatever we got, we'll give to our children and grandchildren. We're going to take care of them. That's what the sandwich generation does. But this generation that Jesus was dealing with, they did this Corbin. And they diss their mother and father. They dishonored them. And they nullified the word of God for the sake of of their tradition. And many times people have traditions that they're doing because it keeps them in power. Traditions makes them a prophet. Tradition gives them the ability to control people. I, oh, I, I know what I'm saying. And I'm talking about at every level. We put laws in order so that we can stay in power and stay in control. You say, Pastor, you being hard today. I, I, I got some good news. I got some good news. But I, I just got the latest thing out. 
because the word of God is sharpened into a two-edged sword, cutting down to the marrow, down to the bone and the marrow. It's supposed to cut sometimes. So this, this was the conflict and now the confrontation. And so then Jesus wastes no time after he confronted them to condemn them. Now, now I got to say this. Some of us, we don't have the right to condemn anybody, but Jesus does, and Jesus condemned them. Listen to what he said in verse 7 through 9. You hypocrites! That's a strong condemnation. You hypocrites! These people, he you don't know, excuse me, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart are far from me. They worship me in vain. They te their teachings are merely human rules. That's the condemnation. He not only condemned them, but he used the prophet Isaiah for support. The Pharisees are people who draw near with their mouth and they honor with their lips. But in reality, they are far from God. They teach their own traditions as laws and violate the law of God. There is a so, so, uh, there is a supreme form. This is a supreme form of idolatry. As it is used, what is supposed to be is good as a way to avoid obedience to God. They trying to cover up their sins. And we Oh, man, I'm sorry, y'all. No, I ain't sorry. It's just where I am today. We're going around and we're using the word of God to justify our bad behavior. People in power in America right now are going around and saying they have the right to separate children from their parents because they are illegal immigrants. And then they say, that's what the word of God tells us we ought to do. You got to obey the law and we have to enforce the law. Well, the law is wrong. Don't use the Bible to justify your inhumanity and your savageness. your immorality don't do it yeah i said it and i say it again you run around talking about god bless america talking about america let's make it great again but i hear god saying if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I, God said, will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Mm -mm -mm. Traditions are good. But there are some things, and sometimes these things are in opposition of the right thing to do. Many times it's easy to go along with how we have always done things than to pursue what is just and right. Jesus holds a mirror up to this hypocritical attitude and, and shows us if our tradition obscures justice 
and human and human flourishing, then they are worthless. God is only pleased with our obedience to Him, not man-made rules. He wants us to walk humbly before our God and to do justly and to love mercy. Not walk around being hard-hearted and then claiming with your lips that you're not. There are many people, young people especially today, who are pursuing justice through organizations outside of the church. Black Lives Matter, stop all the shooting in schools. They're doing all kinds of stuff. And the question becomes, is the church lost its prominence on these issues? Is the churches, are there, are there traditions within the church that are keeping us from connecting with the young people as well as actually pursuing justice. Jesus knew that man-made traditions were not as important as obeying God and obeying God's word and walking in righteousness. Many things are minor as, as, and we as humans have a tendency to make them major. It is our responsibility to examine ourselves and, and see whether we have less than important traditions that have become idols that keep us from pursuing God's heart. We need a change, y'all. We need a change to do the right thing. And justice for all trumps tradition that benefits a few. What you saying, preacher? There's a change coming. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to make that change. I'm ready to love the Lord thy God with all my heart and soul. I'm ready to love him and then to love my neighbor as myself that's the change that we need we gotta have a heart for god and we gotta have a heart for the people of this world and jesus our lord and savior he showed us how to do it he 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 came as a bond servant did not think it robbery to be equal with god the king as a bond servant and he endured the cross and despised the shame he died on the cross for your sins and my sins he died for everybody in the world and god said for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus gave his life for you and for me that we might make a change, turn from our traditions and turn from our wicked ways and reach out and turn towards God. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And he came that, that we might have a changed life, that we might receive eternal life, that we may no longer be in contradiction with Jesus, that we may not be those that come with a confrontation to Jesus, that we might be the one that Jesus can say no condemnation to them that walk in the spirit. So as we close today, I want to pray for you and pray for my country, America, America the beautiful, 
God bless America to do what's right and do the right thing. Dear Lord, bless America to do the right thing. And Lord, bless us to be the change agents to help this world, everyone in it, to do the right thing. How do we do it, Lord? You say, Lord Jesus, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And if we preach, teach, and live Christ, it will draw others. They will see our good works and they will glorify God. Lord, help this little light of ours shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I close, Facebook and we go into overtime in the conference call. If you want to join us on the conference call, you can call 619-639-4733. If you have any questions or comments, I would enjoy a dialogue about this lesson and any other subject that you want to bring up. If you need prayer, you, you're having a hard time today. Your daddy's gone to heaven or your daddy is alive and you don't know where he is. Or your daddy, your daddy got issues. He's locked up. Or your daddy even abused you and you need prayer today. Do the right thing and join us on the conference call so that we can pray for you. 619-639-4733. And then before we leave, we always like to pray the prayer of salvation with those that are listening. Please repeat this prayer after me. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Facebook, thank you. See you next week. We're going to be talking about justice next week. We're going to talk about justice rolling down <laughs> thank you god thank you for joining us and remember do the right thing you're blessed so be a blessing see you later facebook